welcome to another episode of the Silicon Dreams, 15.50 a.m. I'm Charlene from Orbis 86, your host for today. So from the challenges of the past to the dynamic present and the promising future, we are going to uncover insights that go beyond the surface of Web3. And today we have joining us Farooq Sheikh, head of marketing at Martian, a Web3 platform that empowers developers to create and monetize decentralized applications. Welcome, Farooq. It's great to have you on the Silicon Dreams. Ashalyn, thanks for having me. Awesome. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, reflecting on your eight years of experience in marketing, growth and entrepreneurship. What initially drew you to the world of blockchain and Web3? So this takes me back to my beginning days, my entrepreneurial days, right? Which is, which is how I began my journey. So I started an e-commerce store back in college, right? So I started doing uh, the pay-per-click ads, the PPC ads, media buying, programmatic ads and stuff like that. So I did that for about three, four years, like the beginning phase of my life, where I sold a company as well, like an e-commerce store, the one that I'm talking about. Um, so during that phase, I realized that there was a lot of um mishaps or a lot of you know uh, lack of trust going on within uh, the data privacy space right at least in the ad domain like in the you know in the ad tech domain right so whatever ads that you see whatever uh, you know collateral that you click on is basically programmed to you know uh, have you um, you know uh, take an action on that particular uh, collateral like <clears throat> instead of you wanting to do it by yourself right so i think the user behavior has uh, so drastically been influenced by these platforms, be it Meta and you know like other platforms, right? <clears throat> other media buying platforms, like Google mm -hmm. and stuff. So I realized that it is time for me to you know stop feeling guilty that you know my bread and butter is coming from you know fr from trying too much into the privacy of uh, the users. And I've done that for a very long time. I've done that for about five, six years. I was in the ad space, like in the ad tech space. I ran my own marketing agency. So at some point it felt that there must be a transition. And that's when the 2019 ICO uh, you know, bubble happened, the you know, the bull market hit, right? So 2019 was the first time when I got exposed to investing in uh, crypto. Uh, so I, I've been holding Ripple and Bitcoin since 2017, since college, but you know, like Web3 as an ecosystem, as um, you know, um, as, as an ecosystem of applications built on you know uh, top of blockchain is something that was pretty new to me, and that was something that happened to me in 2019, right? So that was the first time I got exposed to this as an ecosystem. So I thought uh, there is something for me to work on, and that's how I started working on my own project called Soul Games. Okay. So it's a game five project. Uh, so we entered Solana India Hackathon in 2021, in November, and we were one of the top five honorary mentions in that uh, hackathon uh, in the NFT gaming category. So that was like a good validation coming from me. And before that, I was just trying to get my hands dirty, you know, uh, you know wanting to learn a lot about uh, this space. So I think there's nothing better, there's no better way than building something, you know, uh, in that particular category or niche to learn about it, right? So I think that's my initial exposure to Web3. Uh, right. So I built it. I raised some decent funds. I raised about $150,000 from a bunch of market investors. And that's how it began. Yeah. Awesome. That's that's a very interesting journey, I must say. So, you know, speaking with, you know, from where you come from and where you are today, can you like share a specific project or campaign from your past experience, uh, you know, in the blockchain space that you particularly found challenging or rewarding, whichever? Or both? Yeah, so... Yeah, so challenging. So it was for my game five project, right? So uh, the idea is to build the community, which was easy because there were there were a lot of uh, you know uh, methods of going about building a community in Web three because Web three is community based anyway. And and whenever you reach out, whenever you start a project and reach out to prospects, uh, there is an inbound intent to belong to a community. So you don't really have to try so very hard. So that comes naturally, but then the challenge was to retain them. Mm -hmm. And how do we retain them for long? I think uh, the churn rate, the, you know, uh, in in Web three is pretty high. It's, it's the highest across any industry that you can think about. So the challenge here was to retain customers, retain users, like the the daily active users, uh, for our gaming project during our test net. Right, we were not main at that point. So the challenge was to retain them. We we were able to acquire about five thousand active users at one point. Right, uh, in a project, okay. that 
slowly like you know fizzle out and slowly gradually you know uh, like you know like uh, tone down to about you know 300 odd uh, daus uh, right in a couple of months and that was uh, a shocker to us so I, I, so that challenge was something that i could not really understand like what really was going on because uh, that is when we realized that you know web3 users web3 gaming enthusiasts just you know just paddle the ships you know just to move around quite a lot you know like trading trying to make a quick buck and xyz so i think that's when we realized that you would have to you know have like a loyalty uh, system around it so we took up the nft project uh, along with our gaming project and then we attached the nft project you know while we gated the nft project uh, for all our users right so that created a sense of fomo and mm-hmm. uh, we attributed the value of the nft for as long so to as much time as they spend as users spend on our platform so that way we were able to retain the user uh, for a very long time in fact after we launched this uh, in about 3 uh, to 4 months we were able to retain about so the churn rate was about 70% month on month till that point by end of 3 to 4 months after launch uh, we were able to have you know retain about 78% 80% of our users it's about 20% churn which is like very very less compared to you know any other industry Uh, in the vertical within web3 so i think that's how we tackled it mm-hmm. but yes i think that's that's the biggest challenge yeah and there are other rewarding stuff as well but that's the biggest challenge that i face yeah i mean you know uh, even now i think web3 marketing is still catching on especially in a country like india so you know uh, on that yeah. note you know what were some of the misconceptions i think you like you know you faced back then but now you've seen it evolve over time especially uh, personally with with how you've come up in web3 so one of the misconceptions is web3 marketing is different like totally different from web2 marketing it's not right i think that's something that even i realized because i i came from the mindset that i'm going to change things so quickly here i'm you know by, by changing i mean the the overall uh, customer acquisition dynamic right the customer acquisition to nurturing to retention to you know, to promotion that, that that entire dynamic was something that i was looking forward to change because the way we would acquire customers in or other users in web2 was like i said at is at the cost of you know uh, the users privacy itself yeah. so but then when i entered web3 it was not so different right so um, and that's on the surface right i think when you dig deeper i think one misconception that uh, that that got uh, you know blown out pretty much in web3 was uh, communities is something that really came to the fore as he as a key to holding the project together i think that's something that we we realize it is is also very relevant in web2 right mm-hmm. uh, now that we seeing you know the ppc cost the ad cost going up in web2 right uh, companies like brands are trying to create content and build their own communities and then you know like uh, like carving out or manufacturing a product that suits the community mm-hmm. so it's become the other way around you know wherein they like build a product roll it out first and then acquire customer Yeah. Uh, but now it's the other way around right so they build a community and then sell a product to the customers uh, so they come right so i think that's something that that's been you know like uh, i would say like a uh, blown apart mm-hmm. uh, post chapter 3 but that's the one parallel that i would like to make that's very right. true i think the importance of communities in web3 is i mean it plays a huge role if there's no community the project barely survives you know in general so um you know moving to like the present now as the head of uh, marketing at marshin how do you currently you know see the landscape of web3 evolving and you know what ro- role does marshin play in this evolving landscape so marshin is a crypto wallet right it's based it's a uh, part of the move ecosystem right uh, and it's built on aptos and sui and marshin is one of the top two i would say the, currently it's the top play, player in the aptos ecosystem as far as wallets game goes uh so uh and my stint with marshan is not so lo- i mean not uh, so long right so i have been associated with them for about 5 months now mm-hmm. and I-, i was bestowed the responsibility of launching uh the portfolio app for the wallet right okay. and so my responsibility was to launch the gtm like to the gtm for the uh, for the portfolio app right uh, build more partnerships around the app with other uh, projects that use our wallet or would integrate a wallet into the system so i think uh, the way i would see marshin in this space is marshin is one of those wallet examples 
uh, that could be replicated by a lot of new uh, wallets to come, you know, uh, to come to the ecosystem in the future because margin is pretty lean. The way it's built mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, it's very user friendly, right? Uh, it's very transparent. Like, I mean, if there is a bug or if there is, a, you know, like a red flag on a certain project's website, an XYZ on a, on a white paper or XYZ, right? So, uh, Martian actually triggers a notification directly, you know, trying to stop that uh, particular transaction, unlike other wallets, which don't really do that unless, you know, you complete the entire transaction. So I think there are certain aspects to it. There is account abstraction feature that's being uh, integrated into the wallet as well uh, over the past, uh, you know, two, three weeks. So I think uh, the way I see Martian evolving in this space, either it could bring more uh, user friendliness and more stickiness to the wallets, right, to the wallet scene, to the wallet space, uh, which has been lacking, right? I think the loyalty aspect of a crypto wallet has been lacking for a very long time. And I think with Martian, uh, I think that is something that we can take uh, a lot of pride in because our stickiness, our loyalty, uh, like our customer loyalty, our user loyalty is very high compared to any other uh, wallet. And we are also built on, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in an ecosystem that doesn't have too many dApps. Right. So we basically occupy about 60% market share in the Aptos ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty commendable. And we, yeah, and we pretty much occupy the uh, entire search real estate for Aptos wallet uh, currently. So I think that's, I mean, th that's how I would see, you know, uh, Martian wallet going forward. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, going back uh, to you when you spoke about, uh, you know, building and nurturing uh, engaged communities and how it's how it is really crucial. So, you know, how do you approach uh, community building in the context of Web3? And, you know, what are the strategies that have proven uh, most effective for Martian? In terms of community, I guess it's, I mean, it's, it's this entire notion of uh, Web3 and communities that also have been like pretty bloated because people have started trying, started exploiting uh, communities as the format, right? I think um, one way to build a community is to like probably do a bunch of quests, do a lot of shady stuff, do shilling and stuff like that. But that's not how you want to build a community. You want to build a community based on you know, showing some value, right? So showing some long-term value. Right? I think uh, I think the, the first aspect that we have to cover when you build a community is to build, is to establish a brand of, offline. I mm -hmm. think that's really important, right? You can't just have a landing page and expect people to just for, uh, uh, flock into your browser or into your digital touch points. That doesn't really work that way, right? Uh, so I think like having like a decent IRL uh, experience and decent IRL uh, presence for the brand is really important in Web3, right? Because of whatever that's been going on in other things and take scratch and all that. So I think. So there is a there is a trust deficit in Web three, and I think to compensate for that, you would have to have that high touch, uh, handsy approach, you know, in, in dealing with your uh, uh, clients' grievances, issues, like queries, right, uh, FAQs and stuff like that. I think it's really important to have a back and forth conversation with the community, and I think that's how you would build a community that sticks. Uh, so this like, going after the numbers doesn't really make any sense because they are. Like, like a billion shady ways of getting those numbers. I think it's about having that constant communication with your users and then showing them value in the long term, but but not you know trying to just you know bring it down to uh, into smaller dopamine hits every week, every con that doesn't really sustain for long, right? And once they get that dopamine hit, they would uh, they would leave and they would switch the community to something else. So you would want to only stick around with that community with that set of users that could last uh, with you for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And one way is to just uh, show it to them initially uh, at the very first instance that uh, you are in it for the long run, right? And that will just filter a lot of uh, noise and, you know, and and just have the cream uh, inside your system. And that's what we want. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the importance of, you know, just giving that in real life experience is also something that we do at Orbis 86. So, you know, it's uh, very relatable in that sense. Uh, something that I did want to ask you was, you know, if you could elaborate on uh, the concept of omni channel user acquisition and retention strategies that, you know, you've developed to projects or, you know, you've kind of seen in the blockchain space and, you know, how do these strategies uh, differ from, uh, you know, traditional marketing approaches? Look, I think omni-channel for Web3 uh, 
would again like just you know just going back to that too right because i think the, so now the space between the line between the two and the three marketing is pretty blurred and like with whatever that has happened i think people uh rather projects now have started you know like approaching web3 uh from a web2 perspective like through a web2 lens by that i mean uh firstly like you know having like doing your housekeeping right just for example like just keeping your seo hygiene in place right uh having a clean newsletter you know having building an like an email list right uh engaging with your community and not just chilling uh paying a bunch of uh, you know a uh, bunch of moderators so i think though so this stuff is something that uh that's pretty you know pretty apparent uh among projects now in terms of how they approach marketing that i think this is something that is going to stick around for a very long time i think that 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 line between web2 and web3 has faded right uh in terms of omni channel like i said uh, now that the line is faded it's not completely but at least i would say like 60 70% faded uh so the part that isn't really faded is that really distinguishes itself into web3 as a web3 uh, project is a partnership right because the three uh, uh, projects they survive on part partnerships i mean that's one way they you know they can acquire users at a very nominal uh, you know cap right i think that's something that you would want to crack i mean you would have to crack how to land a partnership and that in itself is a very uh, you know is a very big deal uh, pun intended okay and um you know as someone who is you know passionate about bridging the gap between web 2 and web 3 uh, how do you okay this is a little uh, you know into the future question so how do you envision uh, this transitioning uh, this transition happening on a larger scale and you know what are the challenges that you kind of foresee especially in terms of marketing so i think uh, the challenges i think okay the future for web 3 marketing is going to be uh, like very unique and very very challenging and i know that's a very broad statement to start with but i think it's going to be unique because um the churn okay so now let's just think about it from a very first principle standpoint right so i think uh web3 fundamentally uh says that uh that it's all democratized and you know uh, and communities everything right so when communities everything uh each and every project now moving forward would want to build so much leverage for their community that it becomes so very difficult for the user to come out of the community and you know and go into another community right uh so uh unlike web two projects where the loyalty is not so great right or the loyalty is not the one that really runs the system uh the project the cash flows for them uh, but in web three i think the loyalty is what's going to take take over now given that in the context right <clears throat> the challenge would be to <clears throat> switch the customer so let's say for, for a new project to acquire a new customer is going to be challenging 3 4 years down the line because communities are the ones where you have to uh you know carve out your new customers right your, your new users and these communities are going to be uh, so very valuable to those users already so you would have to show much, show so much more value compared to the other uh, players in the ecosystem and that's going to be so so very difficult so it's going to be difficult for the new new projects to acquire new customers uh rather i would say the first 1000 customers and once they you know like hit that rather complete that plateau of uh, of that latency i think that's when the uh, the network effect would kick in and then you know, things would spiral but i think it's going to be difficult for the first 1000 2000 uh you know uh, users right? i think that's the challenge uh, and for the same reason i think it's going to be pretty huge i think lastly on that i think uh since web3 believes in data privacy and you know and, and not really storing your data so the, the entire cookie uh, uh system is going to go out of the picture right so the projects will not have information about what you clicked on and xyz that and, and where you engaged with been to so your entire user journey across web is out of the picture now in the next 3 4 years so when that goes out uh community becomes so much more important because uh you cannot retarget uh, users that might have landed on your landing pages or on your digital touch points and not can you can't really do that in the next few days so it's very challenge- challenging in that context and companies will be uh, powerful right yeah. yeah 
So, you know, I mean, in 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 driving uh, adoption and innovation, like in the whole, you know, decentralized ecosystem, what do you think, uh, you know, are the steps that the industry as a whole needs to take? And, you know, how can um, marketers like yourself contribute to this transformation? I think marketers should start focusing on building more trust. I think that's fair because founders, like, de- like builders are building stuff uh, already. And I think, that's one part of it, like building more and more stuff in the ecosystem will obviously have its own uh, effect on increasing trust. But I think uh, marketers would have to play a pivotal role in building the brand uh, for the project. Right? I think there's no brand in the three. Like besides, like, see a top 30, 40 projects, there's no brand, right? Uh, like something like, let's say, the other day, Cosmos got split into two, and I think uh, nobody saw that coming. So I think. Uh, we we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I think that's not how customers would want to uh, would want to see you. Uh, you know, if, if they want to stick with you, so you would want to build a brand that is known for something, right? Just for example, like Nike, right? It's it's known, it stands for something, and that's what uh, you know that that's what differentiates it from various other brands. So I think you would want to be known for something and uh, and and stand by it for a very long time, right? Yeah. And not uh, to go back on your word that happened with a bunch of projects in the web three, right? So I think we are hard folks, and you know, we, we, I think this is where you would lose trust with web three. I think marketers should have to come together and say that was these are these X, Y, and Z rules that each and every project would have to adhere to, and that's how we can build a baseline trust with uh, our customers, with our users, right? I think that uh, consensus will. To come along uh, in years to come once uh, the system the ecosystem becomes more and more organized and more and more regulated right now i think it's pretty uh, while it's wild wild west right i think there's no one entity that can bring uh, a lot of marketers together because to be honest even marketers are hedging their risks uh, whether to go completely into that three or uh, just you know put one leg into that two and just you know just pay the bills so i think to be fair, even I have done that during my beginning phase of my crypto, even, even till uh, the middle phase of my of my web three journey. So th- that skepticism still uh, lies within web three marketers, and that would have to fade, uh, you know, f- for the ecosystem to survive. And for that, we have to build brands and not projects. Yeah, and um, you know, while you said like building trust is one of the most important things for you know anything to survive in web three at this point because of everything that's happening. Um, and not a lot of projects being doxxed and things like that. So, you know, I believe that uh, one of the most important things is also educating an audience. And um, I know that you've been a speaker and a, a trainer at various events, if I'm not wrong, um, you know. So how do you kind of tailor your message to, you know, educate and inspire the, these these diverse audiences about the opportunities and challenges in Web3? Because, you know, even if I heard about something like this before, especially when we hear of things like crypto, uh, we automatically, or some of us just want to push it aside and be like, oh, it, it, we are associated with scams. So, you know, how do you, uh, you know, educate the audience saying that this is what Web3 is and this is what the potential really is? So, I think... Uh... So for anyone who wants to educate themselves about crypto and wants to enter crypto, they have to fall in love with the philosophy of blockchain and not the promise. And there's a huge difference, right? Uh, somebody who comes into crypto now wants to like, you know, like swap something or you know make it or you know. It's, so that's not working anymore, right? and and you would want to stick with projects for a very long time uh, for you to see something uh, come to end. Mm-hmm. So now, in that context, if there is no return, like let's say if there is no financial return, like why would you want to do something, right? That's for the philosophy of it. Mm-hmm. So if you are in love with the philosophy of Web3, uh, with the ideology of Web3, the, you know, the founders of, uh, you know, um, this really cool technology, I think that's where, uh, you know, you, you can incentivize yourself or you can motivate yourself to stick for long. So for that, I think you would have to educate uh, about blockchain from, from from validated sources, right? Just don't follow everybody with a the cool DP on Twitter. I think that's not and with with a verified DP, you know, and a bunch of followers, a hundred K followers plus is not a legit uh, 
uh, crypto source to uh, uh, like you know like absorb content from. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you would have to do some research in terms of uh, who to follow and validate them, see right. what they've done in the past, right? I think that's where you begin. It's not just about reading. You don't just depend on articles, Substack, Medium, you know, like Maven and stuff like that, right? So because these players have their own vested interests, right? And they write content that suits them, that suits their project, that suits SEO and XYZ. So you would not want to just fall uh, uh, prey to content that's being produced by some random player, some random media outlet. Rather, just follow some really good thought leaders who've been in the space for the technology, for the philosophy, for the ideology, and not for uh, the financial outcome. That's where you begin. And whatever that they say, whatever that they uh, propose, is what, again, you'd want to cross-check with others who are talking about the same thing and then make your own decision, right? I think it's about people. It's not about some trusting somebody or something without a face, right? Yeah. You'd want to go with something with a face and with with a valid trail of uh, you know, uh, credibility and that's where you'd want to start, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that being said, I think for there are a lot of people who are, you know, hesitant to enter Web3, but at the same time, they find it very exciting. So, you know, on that note, what, uh, you know, what is the one advice that you'd want to give somebody who's looking to enter Web3 marketing, blockchain, or just Web3 in general? Advice to enter Web3, right? So, look, I think Web3 is different from crypto. Clearly, right? So crypto uh, user need not be a Web3 enthusiast or a user, right? I think uh, it depends on uh, what value you want to draw from that Web3 project. If you want to draw a very specific value that, you, that you're that you not getting from a Web3 project, then I think it's the place for you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if, if, you are, if you're getting the same value from a Web3 project, just stick to your Web3 project, right? Or, or Web3 project, right? So you do not have to get into Web3 just to experiment with stuff that you don't stick around because that's just a waste of time, right? Uh, something needs to be solved um, for you by that particular Web3 project. That's the only reason you have to come. So I, I, I just think uh, that you just explore, like somebody just explore uh, alternates of whatever project they're currently using, right? For example, just open your uh, app store or your or your place store and just, just skim through whatever the apps that you're already using from the open space, right? And see if you can find alternates to that in that way. Just surf through, understand, learn more about them, the founders, team, and so on. And if you like uh, the experience of the of the Web3 project, the Web3 alternate, then you can stick around. I think it's about the use case. If the Web3 project is giving you a use case to stick around, I think that's the best way to enter Web3. Right, because you are validating the, uh, you know, uh, the benefit of Web three, and that's I think is a very good uh, aspect for you to uh, stick around for a very long time. Right, you want to validate something that's going to stay with you for a very long time. So I think yeah. that's where you could you actually uh, begin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, so the last question, um, what, uh, you know, are the skills and mindsets that you believe are crucial for, you know, marketers or entrepreneurs to cultivate uh, in order to succeed in this, in this world of, in the world, world of F3? I think the biggest skill that, I think the biggest and probably the only skill at this point would be, uh, to network with as many people as possible, right? Just build your network in that. You just know everyone. There's no harm. Just know the good, bad, and ugly, right? Uh, and I think that is going to give you a lot of context in terms of what's really uh, is going on today, what happened yesterday, and what's coming tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? Because people are the ones that are driving this. There, there's no government. There's no. There's there's nothing around, right? There's no like, like there's no like trillion dollar VC fund coming from somewhere. It's just you know, a bunch of enthusiasts just, you know, just throwing money around and stuff like that. It's, there's no soft bank backing the, you know, backing the project, that, you know, with a 40 billion, 50 billion fund. So it, it, it's all uh, coming, uh, I mean, so I think all the interest and the funds is coming from enthusiasts, right? So you would want to network with as many people as possible, as early as possible, right? Uh, and for that, you'd have to build a portfolio first, right? Just build a portfolio in terms of, how we were able to contribute to projects in that three, right? Just build a trail of all that work. Could be a could be a GTM strategy that might have helped uh, 
uh, with for, you know, for an NFT project, let's say, right? Let's say you, you might have contributed something uh, in a DAO, in a, in a DeFi DAO. Or whatever. So I think you would want to contribute something and then create a trail of all that, put that on Notion or a landing page or whatever, and then s- start reaching out to thought leaders or not necessarily thought leaders. You could just reach out to, you know, uh, somebody who's active on Twitter, creating content around like the blockchain exercise. And, and LinkedIn from school, right? So you would want to build your network. Absolutely. Right? And literally, like, I mean, the, as the saying goes, your network is a network in Web3, at least. I don't know about Web2 anymore, but I think in Web3, it's, it's your network that's going to, you know, sustain you for now. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, networking, again, it goes to the whole thing of, you know, community building and IRL uh, uh, meetings and, you know, events and things like that and the whole experience there. And, you know, that kind of builds the bigger picture for Web3, of course. So, yeah, it was a great conversation. I think with that, we come to an end of um, today's episode with the Silicon Dreams. It was lovely having you, Farooq. Thanks for taking time out to be here and give us your insightful, um, you know, thoughts on Web3 and your experiences. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just... Thanks, Elaine. Thanks to Silicon Dreams. And thanks to you.